Cannon top. Uh, I love it. What does he do? Well, it's pretty he self-explanatory. Owns, he owns a nightclub. He's a cannon from the shoulders up. And he's a top. He's so, a power top. <laughs> look at him. Raw firepower. <laughs> Shoots it right in there, too. Who's your favorite Power Ranger? Quick, go. Billy. Okay. We played Power Rangers before. We talked about who our yeah. favorite Rangers are. Mine is Jason. I'm only being this way because I wanted to play Final Fantasy VII and James shot me down. Look, I don't even know how that would happen. I don't even know how that would happen. And that's what I wanted to show you. And you were just obstinate and, uh, you know, just real bullheaded like you are about everything. I was. I sent a picture of a bull and I said, imagine this is me. And then I said, did you enjoy the movie Zodiac? And he goes, what? I've seen Zodiac before. I've got to thinking about it. <laughs> it was I've a very seen popular the movie. movie. It like, was extremely popular. It, did, I kept thinking, so I kept thinking to myself, he's talking about a movie that I haven't seen. There's which, some kind of like underground movie called Zodiac also. Which I appreciate your vote of confidence in my like hipster taste or whatever. Right, I just assumed it was something I'd never seen before. What niche stupid thing does he want me to watch what, what now? What dumb thing are we going to watch? God. Uh, welcome back to Watch and James Don't Play. My name is Ivan Ooze. And I'm still Rita Repulso. <laughs> no, so we're Watson like this... and James, though, for real. Hold on, let's do some podcast business for a second here. Oh, podcast you business. You just jump past it. You always jump past the intro in the part where we would normally put like relevant information at the beginning of a video. <laughs> I guess. T say the say the stuff then. So the stuff is say it. Do not subscribe to us. Don't do it. Don't do it anywhere. We are at the perfect level. Do not subscribe to us. I'm done. Don't I'm do done it. Done with new people. Don't do it. <laughs> you would really ruin things around here if you tried to be our fan. We got a good thing going on now. We got a good thing going. I don't need more anything. people to appease. I don't need anything. So just stay away from these videos. These videos are not for you unless you're already subscribed. I don't need or want anything from you. All right. But on, I also love you and adore you. On with on with the show. Do, the, right. do the stuff you want to do now. I did the stuff I want to do that already. That was my rant. All right. My name is Ivan Ooze, and you're my uh, repulsive lover, Rita. Don't leave. You'll miss my coming out party. I'm leaving Lord Zed for you. Wait, you're leaving Lord Zed for me. Thank you. All yes. right, sorry. Don't get it twisted. I like the implication of somehow Lord Zed and Ivan Ooze are old lovers. Oh, here we and go. That's the real jealousy there. Here's the dynamic. Okay. All right, so Ivan Ooze is the mighty monarch. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm Dr. Girlfriend, and then that makes Zed Phantom Limb. No, other way around, absolutely. So Lord Zed, I'll explain myself. Yeah, do it. Lord Zed is the monarch, okay? He's oh, okay. the guy who is the main, I'd say male well, villain, you well, know? yeah. You know? Uh, Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed are married. And here comes Ivan Ooze. Ivan Ooze. Oh, he's the interloper. Yeah, he swoops in on his purple stallion. God, I love the word interloper. And uh, says, Rita, what's up? It's been a thousand years. You want to get freaky or what? How about taking another quack at it? And then they do. And they totally do. Yeah. They ooze everywhere. Immediately, too. Rita's like, oh, yeah, I gotta get me some of that. I'm not joking. This is in the movie. The The motion of their lovemaking created several deformed putties. So you've heard of the page... <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, you're familiar with the page master, right? Yeah. Of course you are. Yeah. It's great. I'm uh, horror, by the way. I'm the <laughs> horror book. I'm Just kind of dumb, but happy to be there. I'm the uh, fairy girl book. I'm Whoopi Goldberg. You are Whoopi Goldberg. I've said this uh, many, many times. It's known. It is known. Established. That's who I am now. Like, you're just talking over old stuff now. Like, everybody's yeah. been known. If you're wondering why I suck so much on The View, that's not me. Mm -hmm. All right? That's no, not Whoopi. I, it, I'm it, Whoopi. I do, a, I do a podcast with Watson, and... Uh, and in your spare time, you are really big into AI. In my spare time, I dress up as a, <laughs> as a <laughs> so got Ivan Ooze. So you've got a voice modulator that you can change from Ivan Ooze back to Whoopi whenever you need to make appearances as Whoopi. And I have a Seabiscuit costume I'm still working on. Well, still that, working out the kinks on that one. And that, if people are wondering, is why there's no Seabiscuit sequel. It's because you've been tinkering with it. The technology's not quite there yet. Working out the kinks. It's about... It's about his second life as a baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Working out the horse kinks, if you will. So what they used to do is they used to skin horses, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Walk us through don't, the horse. Uh, don't look up baseball manufacturing, guys. Especially old school leather work. <laughs> don't look up horse slaughtering either. It's a bad time. All right, glue sniffers. Let's do this. <laughs>
Oh man, we were off off track, and I love it. That was a full. We normally try to pull back before it gets that weird. I, I feel got, like it got pretty weird. That was like an off mic conversation there for a minute, and I enjoyed it. And I'll do it again in front of all of you. You but can't only, stop me. Only all 132 of you. 132 of you are my favorite people on the internet, and everyone else can suck a bag of dicks. Right? Bag of dicks is gonna take a while. Like just one. I didn't say how many were in the bag. Two would be a bag of dicks. If you think small, so? If it's a small bag or a satchel big, of a, or big dicks, like a crown royal bag of dicks. All right, you could fit two in there. Let's say each of us cut off our dicks, and then we were going to put them in a communal bag for just the two of them. How big would the bag need to be? Like I said, the Crown Royal bag this is This is your perfect. SAT math question. <laughs> it is, yeah. I think Calculate it. the volume and circumference of a dick versus standard gallon, half-gallon size, like Ziploc bags. Got to be the, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, stuck, I'm sticking with what I originally said. Like an old Crown Royal bag, the ones that are a little bigger. I like your style. I like the drawstring aspect of what you're describing. Well, I think of like a pouch, you know? I'm picturing like a Frenchman with baguettes, but it's dicks sticking out the top of his bag. Where else can you find a fantasy pouch? He's like, oh, oh, oh look at these dicks. <laughs> these are my dicks. They belong to me now. I was at the dick store. <laughs> <laughs> they recently belonged to my father. He passed them on to me. Do not give rep them. I'm going to eat them as soon as I get home. <laughs> um, nom, 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 nom. Uh, Frenchman with a baguette style bag of dicks. What do you think is funny about biggest dickus? Is that an <laughs> amusing thing to you? What amuses you about this? <laughs> oh, fantastic. It's been a weird week. It's, it's not a bad one. It's been a weird week. I didn't, weird. Uh, weird does not... Weird usually implies bad. I know, and I hate people, you know, sure. for, for taking the word weird. They did the same thing with queer, you know. Amazing, also bad, terrifying, also change. Like, a lot of definitions just change because people are like, no, I know what it means. You and I had a breakthrough this week. Do you oh, remember? Yeah? In therapy? Uh, kind of. So, Watson and I also work together, so we see a lot of each other. Including, sexually. Sexually, including the show. You know, break times are for personal time. Oh. So, the breakthrough, I don't even know if you remember it, but I've, I'll never forget it. Fantastic. Let's it, do this. Is that... I, I don't like hanging out with anyone much, ever. I have a hard time leaving the house. You are a noted hermit. And it's because I like it here. You have constructed uh, a very peaceful and relaxing, like, happy place for yourself. And that's really what anybody wants in life. The only problem comes when you make it too comfortable. I kind of make it someone else's problem. Well, you kind of made it too comfortable, and now you don't want to leave. Right. At all. Ever. Which is... Look, even even Now, the problem is, even when I want to leave, I'm uh, like, right. I'm not going to leave. That's what it is. It's that you have the choice to leave, but you've made it harder for yourself to make what you know is ultimately probably the healthy choice. Right? Yes. And it, I, I'm saying all this as someone who is the exact same way. Yeah, as a friend, too. You know, it's, right. hard, to, it's hard to get out. Of, it's hard to get out. That's all it is. It's hard to want to do anything outside of work that I don't have to do. Because, like you... I have all my stuff. Part of it is All my stuff is there, and I like my stuff, and I like to do what I like to do and do the activities I like to do, you know, unencumbered. Right. Part of it is that, you know, work takes up minimum 10 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the day, I'm, I'm counting all the minutes, right? I go, all right, I got three and a half, four hours of me time at the end of the day. I also have shit that I have to do at the house after work. So, yeah, it's hard for me to get out of that funk. Mm-hmm. Um, I never beat this guy before. This is awesome. I'm really proud of you. Amazing. Mirror Maniac, eat dicks. You know what? I think your your dad might come back now. <laughs> okay. He was waiting for this. <laughs> this is the moment. Son, I'm here. Oh, good. He's not a fucking loser anymore. He finally beat the first level of Morphin, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie on Super Nintendo. The contract is fulfilled. I can't believe it's taken you this long to figure out Honestly, what this, I actually wanted this whole time. This was a bit of a joke at first, but I really, at a, at a certain point, wanted to see if you could do it. And, uh... I'm happy to say today is that day. Now I'm Billy. You graduated God. to Billy. I look fucking awesome, don't I? You look what, great. What am I supposed to do here? I like the power stance. You're supposed to jump. Oh, your just wait. Boat up, I okay. guess. Yeah, because it's the intro to yeah. this level. I like his double fist punch. At this point in the in the stop making homophobic comments. All right, so <laughs> he just we'll, punches everybody. We'll get to. Uh, don't touch me. Uh. Oh, cower. That's cower. A, that's a great power to have, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, jets. <laughs> 
You can't. Mas- masculine things. I hate masculine things. Don't, don't. A razor blade? No. Don't be scared, Billy. Those jets aren't going to melt steel. Uh. <laughs> um, we'll get into the Power Rangers lore and why this, why Billy being like this at this point in time is bullshit. It's total bullshit. I'll explain why shortly. But the breakthrough is that even though I say I don't want to, I hurt my own feelings, right? You set up situations where you can't win. Yeah. I'll be like, no, I don't want to go anywhere. And then I go, what's wrong with me? And then then I I realize I'm like, wow, I'm kind of hurt. But then I think about who hurt me? Me. I hurt me. You hurt you. Yeah. Shit. Why do I do this to myself? This fucking sucks. Yeah. You have that weird feeling of like, oh, yeah, you know, I know it shouldn't matter, but it does kind of matter. Right. Damn it. Why does it matter? Oh, there was an opportunity and I didn't take it. Damn it. It really is my fault. You know, those like, are the thoughts I have when I don't do I, things with people. Sometimes I'll ask to hang out with somebody and they'll be busy, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a completely valid reason and I'm super cool with it, obviously. And my feelings are still hurt. Even though I'm fine with it. Oh, you get that too. Yeah, it sucks. You get that side of it. I see. I don't get that. If people are busy, I just assume that I'm, I'm gross, and that's fine. <laughs> and that's what it is too. They're disgusted by you. They're a oh, Watson. He's fucking nasty. Uh, you, you really can't disguise <laughs> can, these paralyzed can, buddies that are just crawling on the ground. They're like, hold on, we gotta land these things <laughs> safely. <laughs> don't jostle us. <laughs> No, I just yeah. Uh, people can't hide their contempt for me, so it's really it's really easy for me to understand why they don't want to hang out. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I joke. I joke. I joke. I kid. We have we have a good time here. All right. See, so that's ah, the blue suit. It's the coolest. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. I was not a red kid. There was never a Stegosaurus uh, Zord, but there was a Triceratops Zord, and for me, that's second best. I like Stegosaurus best. That's my favorite dinosaur. And my second favorite is the Triceratops, which is what Billy is, which is awesome. Tommy's awesome, but the whole like Dragon Zord thing, you're not a dinosaur anymore. Mm. At that point, I started figuring out, oh, they're using footage from Japan. They're really just kind of piecing this shit together, aren't they? Yeah, they're trying their best with the footage they receive. Yeah. I'm Saban was a fucking genius. Did you hear, though, that Saban would not send footage of the Zords actually changing and coming together? Like, that footage just didn't come from Japan. Yeah, he was fucking... He was touchy. You so know? the people who were making Power Rangers here in the U.S. were like, I guess we'll film it ourselves, go buy some toys, and we'll pose them and make it look like real footage. So if you watch the footage from the old show, you can clearly tell, like, oh, those aren't even models. Those are literally toys. Real quick, hold that thought. Yeah, go ahead. I am stuck. I see that, yeah. My only weakness, a stack of boxes. Are you kidding me? Something them? slightly taller than me. Damn. Do I... Can I power hold jump? On. Is it a, what was that? Is it a matter of the railing thing above you? Can you like hang? No, no. All right. <sighs> the I like this move. Spikes are clearly bad for you, but his little back handspring thing is neat. I like that. That's cool. Come All on, right. you got to be able to get up there. Right? All right, pause. It's more for time. We figured it out. It's a button. I just wasn't pressing a, a certain button. It's a button you wouldn't think to use. Mm-mm. Silly. And back down and dodge the bullets. Not enough real guns in Power Rangers, you know? They're like, we'll fix that, don't worry. Uh, Can I jump up there, then? The 80s and early 90s and stuff were a weird time for for kids' entertainment because there was a big push towards, if if you're going to make stuff for kids, we, we just went through all the toy brain rot stuff of the of the early and mid 80s so let's let's do less real guns let's do less real violence and that's when you get like captain planet and all of gi joe's enemies suddenly have lasers right because they're trying to to find a happy medium between the garbage of kids tv from the 80s and the mass produced toy commercials that cartoons from the 90s were and the power rangers had uh firearms that they did not use right because they, they still want to sell the toys and they had weapons they all had a specific weapon let's let's go through them real quick see if i remember yeah let's do it red ranger had a sword just straight up sword mm-hmm. the black ranger had one axe or two axes i think, I think he, had, he had double axe i think he had or just one the one because he wouldn't he do like a cross thing where he crossed them over each other to look cool well, so Billy, I know for a fact, had two, like, maces. Right, right. Uh, let's see. Trini had... So Zach had the axe, at least one axe. Jason had the sword. Billy had double maces. Uh, but, but, but Kimberly had a bow and arrow. 
Or just Ooh. a bow. I think it shot like laser arrows. I was, was going to cool. say just a bow. And I want to say that Trini just had knives, like dual wield knives. Oh, okay, like a dagger. Set. Yeah, so Zach just had the one axe. Billy well, and. Just one who had two axes that. Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it could be anybody. Yeah. Might just be a Frank Frazetta painting. The dual wielders, though, were uh, Trini and Billy. Sure. Later replaced by uh, Aisha. Mm hmm. She replaced the Yellow Ranger for the movie, actually. And Adam replaced Zach as the Black Ranger. The original Yellow Ranger was... Oh, and Rocky replaced Jason as the Red Ranger. Was my crush. I like. I know everybody liked the Pink Ranger, but I was into the Yellow Ranger. I'm into that, yeah. She was nicer. She was just nicer and a little cooler. A little more, uh, like, a person? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Kimberly. Sorry, Kimberly. They didn't, you know... You it, know what the character was. You know they weren't fault. giving you... Yeah, it's not my fault they didn't give you a personality. <laughs> right. Uh, also, I was seven. So, you know, how much so, you, how pardon much, me for judging. How much do you think those kids got paid to be on that show? Not enough. No, not enough. Not, not for the enough. Not for the bullying and harassment and stuff that they went through. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to go into detail or say anything super bad. Go back and listen to our old uh, Power Rangers episode if you want to hear us talk a little more about that. But I know the Green Ranger gave Billy some shit. I don't know the details. Oh, look at that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, he puts them together and they become like a staff. I was going to say, there's a, yeah, there's, That's a, awesome. there's a component of putting stuff together. That's fucking sweet. But like, they never used the weapon in the show. Well, no. No, they didn't want kids. Remember they, <laughs> they'd, put them together, they'd put them together sometimes for a big gun. Sometimes, for whatever reason, they were like in a populated area. They couldn't transform into right, a Megazord. Right. So they don't worry. We got a big gun. All right? There's going to be... Some collateral damage, but minimal. It's gonna look cool, guys. It's gonna look fucking awesome. <laughs> that family of four is dead. But, you know, that's the cost of doing business. Cannon Top. <laughs> Which I, is, like, not even really a name. Like, just love the... That's just two words put next to each other. <laughs> right. Cannon Top. Uh, I love it. What does he do? Well, it's pretty he owns a nightclub. He's a cannon from the shoulders up. And he's a top. He's so, a power top. <laughs> look at him. Raw firepower. <laughs> Shoots it right in there, too. Really reminds you of who he is and what his name implies. Oh, him? He barebacks down at the manhole on Thursday nights. <laughs> Does he own the manhole? He used to. Ooh, that they sounds... They took it away. That sounds dangerous. Owning the manhole? No, barebacking down there. <laughs> oh, okay. I own the manhole. It's, you know, it's dirty work, but it's honest. Look, I just want to say, if you're going to meet a guy named Cannon Top at the manhole, bring protection. <laughs> and I don't mean another gun. <laughs> right. Oh, silly. Silly, silly. Uh, see, this is why we like stuff like the Venture Brothers, because they take those care. Like, they have Tank Top, who's, the <laughs> oh, right. who's a fake G.I. Joe guy. He only gets, like, five seconds of screen time. I like the names. I'm always... But he, yeah, he wears the turret from a tank like a tank top. It's who, great. It's who, great design. Who was the guy with the metal jaw? Uh, Baron Underbite. They really tried to make him do a thing. He just didn't stick. He would periodically pop back up as the show progressed, but he only had maybe, what, two, three episodes that were dedicated to him as a character? I can uh, shine some light on that for you. Okay, yeah. sure. I'm curious about that because he did... It feels like he didn't disappear, but he faded away. Sure. And I understand that feeling completely. Uh, if you watch season one, especially, you'll see that, like you're talking about, he was there, and he was a, like it seemed like they were going to do more with him. Um, the Mighty Monarch was obviously like the main antagonist. The Mighty Monarch. I know. I, I always hear it in my head too. Uh, but then they also had kind of a, a rogues gallery. You know what I mean? It's like there's more than one arch enemy for Dr. Venture. So one yeah. of the other ones, one of the other people that had kind of a backstory with him that they show is Baron Underbite. The idea was that he was a rich kid from this basically fictitious place where he was a brutal dictator. And then he went to college with Rusty and stuff in the States. That's how they know each other. Rusty accidentally blew up part of the science lab in college. That's what caused Underbite to lose his jaw. It gets replaced with the metal jaw. Aisha was on her way to the prom, apparently. So all this stuff is... <laughs> she, she's had to do her spring formal? <laughs> right. Uh, it's homecoming. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guys, get out of here. I gotta get to the Sadie Hawkins dance. There, we listed all the dances there in high school. A sock hop? <laughs> A sock hop. Oh, damn. A box social? Oh, we're fucked. Uh, so anyway... We have snowboards. Um, so, oh, never mind. So I back, have a snowboard. So back to season one of the Venture Brothers. Well, that's a hot move. They do the episode that you're talking about where, where Doc crash lands into Baron Underbite's country, basically, and gets captured by them, right? Yeah. Gets involved in a whole 
terrorist plot. All that stuff happens. Great episode. But what ended up happening was having him take off the gross jaw and everybody be grossed out by it, that's like the one good joke that that, that guy had. Sure. That's his the tongue, one. His tongue flops out. And it's gross, and everybody goes, Ew, Ew. put the jaw back on. And that's pretty much it. So that happens in Tag Sale Your It, is the name of that episode, where Rusty has a garage sale outside of his compound, and a bunch of people buy his old I just, science I crap. just love that episode where they grab the lightsaber, and they just kind of... Same episode. It's just light. I've been um, it's an all-time episode. If you're going to show somebody something from the first season, show them Tag Sail You're It. That's the vibe of the show. They argue about Depeche Mode. It's great. Anyway. so Depeche Mode? Once I can, Again, I can hear it. But he's the guy from Depeche Mode. That's it. Thank you. Uh, what do you mean he's straight? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. Vindication. Anyway. So... Once that joke's used, and they do the episode on his whole like, explanation for his backstory and why he hates Rusty, yeah, they just didn't have anything else for him to that do. That was it? Okay. That's it. It felt like he was going to be a really big deal, I though. think they thought that, too. Whenever they were writing the character, like, yeah, oh, yeah, he's going like, to be really something. And it's going to be hilarious. He's got a whole bit. He's going to be a reoccurring, like, oh, I hate you for my jaw kind of thing, and you can go back and forth forever. And I can hear them giggling about the bit. Yeah, and then kind of once they do the bit because we've done this bit too where we're like this is gonna be good and then the bit happens and we're like oh that's well the bit went perfectly but it just wasn't a great bit right it was fine I guess um, and we cut those out <laughs> <laughs> you'll never see them you'll I don't even have them anymore they're dead no you can listen to the fifteen minute episodes the very first episodes that we did I think you can probably hear a couple there I can see that butt slam that's awesome <laughs> fuck yeah atomic butt slam butt slam. So why'd you give Aisha the butt slam? It's one of those things. Answer the question, Saban, you fucking weirdo. Where obviously the Mighty Monarch is the best, like antagonist. He's just got the most going on, and I don't want to spoil who he is for anybody who hasn't finished the Venture Brothers. But right. it's great. Also, it came out. They made the right choice. It's been out for twenty years, so maybe well, get well, with it. Technically, it just ended like a year ago, which is insane to me. The movie just came out. That's just nuts. I mean, yeah, they're auctioning off. Uh, production art from the Venture Brothers right now. You can get your own Money Monarch drawing for like 1200 bucks. Aisha, you're looking uh, masculine. It's because... To say the least. Uh, two things. One, I, Tell belie- me why. I believe all the stunt guys were guys. They were. So except for the, the Pink Ranger was a girl. And I believe that they didn't have any footage from Japan that would work as well. So they had to reshoot some stuff with the suits. That's why you... Yeah, Such awkward transitions between them in the suit and obviously someone else. Yeah, in the Super Sentai show, the only girl was the Pink Ranger, which mm-hmm. is why she has a skirt and why Trini and uh, Aisha, respectively, did not have skirts thank on their you. Ranger yes, outfits. That is cor- thank you. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, I've been into Power Rangers lore. We never revisited the Billy thing. So Billy learned martial arts. Jason taught him how to fight, finally. Jason was like, you got to learn how to fight, dog. You're and not it- always going to have uh, your Ranger abilities to help you. Or just your smarts. Right. You yeah, know. whatever. You're going to need to learn how to fight as a person and not just on the morphing grid, you know? We get in some pretty rough scrapes, and I need you to not be a punk bitch out there. Right. All right. These putties are attacking the school today. If you're going to be a part of this team, you need to be able to pull your own weight. And to Billy's uh, credit, he's like, okay. And Billy's like, yeah, I should probably step up a little since, you know, this isn't theoretical fighting. This is real fighting. So by the movie, which this is what this is based on, Billy's... You know, he could take care of himself. Skellerina is a great name, by the way, for this boss. I like the the I like all the villain names because they could all be really good like band names. Or Pokemon. Yeah, Skellerina. Uh Magic Mirror was the last guy. Magic Mirror's a cool I'm sure there's a lot of bands out there called Magic Mirror. Yeah. It just works. If you're doing like a like a dark fantasy metal thing, mm-hmm. like a progressive rock oh, dark yeah. fantasy. Mm. I just see mist rolling in the sides and like mirrored surfaces in the video like oh yeah yeah that would be great i would love to to know how to really play music i can mm-hmm. play the drums you know but i can't write music on the drums i, I mean, would love to make like i don't a, know that a lot of songs are written on the drums i don't know I, I know that <laughs> piano guitar piano guitar i wish i knew how to actually i wish i knew my keyboard better so i could there write you go. songs okay that makes more sense to me because i'm picturing you like at a drum cycle. <laughs> 
Creeper. So it reminds me whenever Dan Danny Carey's walking it through his drum set, and you go, yeah, you can make music with this, but it's still just drums. It's just drums. It's marimbas and, yeah. and cool shit like that, but it's still just drums. They're not really making new drums. Right. Like, drums have been around for a hot minute. And as any drummer will admit, myself included, it's just drums. You can't do much by yourself. But I also think that a lot of instruments that aren't lead guitar claim that too the because they feel insecure about it because so many rock bands are fronted by guitar the director of whiplash is like you can actually do a lot with drums you uh, can do a whole movie with drums you can win an oscar with drums <laughs> you can destroy a kid's life with drums still can't get pictures of spider-man but that's another story look at her move fucking bitch slap yeah better awesome have my money uh so you can <laughs> yeah. <actually laughs> yeah i didn't realize that you could actually play this game as uh what's her what's her face with the ponytail who dated Pete Davidson, Ariana Grande. Oh. <laughs> it looks like we're playing as Ariana Grande. So my issue with uh, Kimberly when I was a kid, because you were supposed to be attracted to Kimberly. That was supposed to be the one that... That's what I'm that saying. I was into, into Trini. Right? I I was into Terry Hatcher. Okay. We, we've discussed this before yeah, on a Terry previous Hatcher episode. Terry Hatcher on The Adventures of Lois and Clark. I go, no, I need a... I need a as a third grade kid, I was like, I need a real woman. You know who I, I need was? Terry Hatcher from Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Dean Cain, get the fuck out of here! You don't, you don't deserve her. Do you know who I, who my step up crush was from the like I need a real woman? You know who mine was <laughs> in like thir in like third grade. I was like Miss Frizzle's got it going on. Oh yeah, she can bench at least four hundred fifty pounds. I've seen her do it. She's fucking athletic. She's fun, outgoing, very knowledgeable. She's curious. Risks it all to make a point. She's risks she, other people's lives to believes, learn something. She believes. In, you know, learning. You'd be surprised what teachers do during the summer break. Today, kids, we're going to give Arnold a colonoscopy. Right. It's going to be getting, fucking cool. Getting the su suspiciously suppository shaped bust, kids. <laughs> there was, so I was a strange child, shocker. What? In fourth grade, I I made a deal with a teacher. I said, and, mm. and it doesn't sound good. You need it? to keep going through that story. I will. The deal with the teacher was, I want to play on the computer after school. Mm. Do you think we could fucking arrange that because we didn't have a computer at the house i wanted to play the magic school bus game because i loved it why haven't we played that on here oh we should that's a good idea I, right well, like what just, are you doing it just popped back in my head all right well write that down a, a core memory just appeared a and, wild core memory appeared and i asked mom and my mom was cool with it she's like no that's fine i don't, I don't care yeah, you know, yeah mom had to work and so you're not going to be doing drugs yeah. sounds great basically yeah so the teacher's like, yeah, of course. They're there till five anyway, mm -hmm. uh, doing unpaid grading papers, you know, working 60 hours a week. Yeah, my mom had to stay. To, I think my mom had to stay contractually until 4.30. Oh, really? It's technically because there are still kids there that need to be picked up. You need a minimum number of people, adults. What to do here. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's not that Keep they're going. trying to get teachers to do all this unpaid stuff. It's that people don't pick up their fucking kids. Sure. And kids get stuck at school at 4 and 5 o'clock, and eventually they have to do a cutoff, but they try to make it to where there's going to be a teacher around. I was going to be picked up. Mm -hmm. I was always picked up. But sure. this was just a... I no, your loved, mother loved you, and she was responsible. Yes. I was in fourth grade. I fucking loved the Magic School Bus. Who didn't? And it was the it was the CD-ROM game where you went inside Arnold and did a colonoscopy on him. It was Hell awesome. Hell yeah. And you just drove your little Magic School Bus around inside his gut. Zapping polyps? Or, like, what were you doing? There was one game. It was... It was kind of, it, it felt polypy. Okay. And it was like a Plinko situation. That kind of sword, was that's like, awesome. Uh-oh, this looks like an irregular section of bowel. So you had to use these little levers and hit the levers to get the bits of whatever. It was supposed to be poop, but it was colorful poop. Was it gum? It, it was wasn't like gum and candy. No, but that was part of the episode. Sure, sure. Arnold ate the piece of gum, and they, were... they followed the gum through his gut as it didn't disintegrate and i right. go that's not how that works at all they were sort of like MythBusters in that way where they were like here's a common thing people think so we'll do a little science play off of that but yeah then they're also putting in misinformation by default because they can't use that gum idea because in real life that's not how gum works not at all oh well we still learned some do you remember the uh do you remember the the sound episode where they go to that haunted house? Yes, that's and the, the sound waves bouncing around. That's the best episode. I want those glasses to this day, where you can put on glasses and see sound waves. That's one of the examples of things that I learned as a kid from TV and not school. Sure, I learned how sound worked from that episode. Before that episode, I didn't fucking know what was happening. I knew I heard. I knew I heard shit. I knew that during a storm, the thunder took a while to get around. 
I didn't really understand why, though. And Miss Frizzle explained it to me. That putty has an AK. Maybe you'd be a Just little... straight up. Maybe you'd be a little better at music if you took it a little farther than... Than the Magic School Bus episode. Maybe you'd be better at writing music on the right. drums. <laughs> if I just did. You know what? Maybe explore this further. No, I'm good. I know how to play the drums now. I'm all set. I know everything about drums. I'm good. Quick, name the oldest cymbal manufacturer in the world. I will... Zildjian. Uh, <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I will worship Danny Carey to the end of my days. As it should be. All right, I think we should watch Zodiac again. Let's, all right. get, let's get out of here. Hang on. Magnet brain, you're going down. Oh, all right, man. we'll see you next time. Some sort of acid magnet. <laughs>